Can a bait knife that costs $3.29 be as good as a bait knife that costs $29.95? Well, I'm about to find out with some tests. As I push up against 40,000 subscribers as I do this video, I get solicitations all the time from manufacturers wanting me to look at their product and perhaps do a video review. And that's what the folks at Moore Knife did when they sent me their solicitation. I wrote it back and said, geez, you know, I appreciate it, but this thing costs $29.95. I can't imagine it would be that much better than the ones I use that cost $3.29. Well, we had some back and forth, and they basically said, well, we'll put our money where our mouth is. And so they sent me this thing, and it's up to me to test it and see if it's that much better than the ones I've been using. So let's kind of look at it from the outside in. The first thing is they both have a, a plastic sheath. They both have belt connections. The one on the cheap knife only goes down a little bit. It's got a little slot here where you could attach to a button. The Moore knife has a much better hookup. It's got an angle thing right here, and it looks like it's got a better button hook right there. So let's go ahead and get into the blades themselves. So the Moore knife is made out of stainless steel, Swedish stainless steel, with a, something called a Scandia grind that's supposed to make it a lot sharper. This one is also floating, and it's got high visibility markings on it, so you can find it easily if it does happen to float into water. It's got a really nice grip that fits beyond my hand, and I've got an average size hand. The cheap knife has a much thicker blade when you look at the two side by side. And the, pla the plastic handle, of course, won't float. And it just kind of barely fits in the, into the palm of my hand. So knives are made to cut. So let's check this out. So out of the box, let's see how $29.95 does. And it cuts nice and smooth. Let's try and do the same thing with my 329 version. And it looks like it rips if it if it cuts at all. So, out of the box, this thing is a lot sharper and it feels a lot better as well. The true test of the durability and the stainless steel quality of these blades is about to be proven. What I've got is my toolbar right here, and I'm going to put each of these knives in the toolbar, and I'm going to use them equally over the next, I don't know, period of time until we see a result. Because basically by having it in here, these are going to always be wet when I'm out fishing, and I won't bother to go ahead and dry them off when I get home. That way the salt and the wet is going to stay on there for the longest time possible. And that will be the true test of which of these blades is the best. And quite frankly, if this $30 knife lasts a lot longer and stays sharper than the 329 version, well, I'm going to be all for it. And it's nice that it floats. There we go. Bright green top makes it easy to find. What are bait knives for? Cut up bait. I'm going to cut up bait with each of these knives, and I'll tell you which one cuts smoother and easier. This bait fish was pretty scaly, and I'm going to go ahead and leave the scum on both knives to let it corrode, but the expensive knife cut better, easier, and faster. Here's another great test of the sharpness of this knife. Redfish have really tough rib bones, and usually I have to use these chicken shears to cut them. Let's see if this knife will do the job. Okay, here are the rib bones right here. Let's see if this will cut through easily. And that is amazing. That is so much easier than using these chicken shears. The sharpness of this blade is phenomenal. 
It's been a couple days since I put the two knives in the nasty, salty, wet environment on the side of my kayak. So let's look at how much each has tarnished. Tarnish? Yeah, stainless steel will tarnish. It's not totally rust proof. You know, the, the, the nasties will get in there at some point. The quality of the stainless steel dictates how much tarnish you can expect. So here's the cheap knife. And you can see that it's got a significant amount of tarnish all over it. And here's the expensive knife, and it has much less, as I think you would hope and expect. Now, the key here is, can you actually just clean it off by wiping it down? And that's what I'm going to try now. And both of them came out pretty nice. But the key is, after using them for a few days, what is the residual sharpness? And so that's what I want to test right now. We're back to the paper test. This has cut a number of bait fish over the last couple days. And let's see how sharp it still is. That's looking pretty good. Now let's test the inexpensive knife. Same exact test. Give it another try here. Fresh spot. It, it, it rips it. So, I think there's the definitive proof that you're getting a better knife for 30 bucks versus $3.50 or so. So what's the bottom line on these two blades? I think, just like anything else, you get what you pay for. The more expensive knife has better steel, better edge, it floats, better grip, uh, just a huge number of positives associated with it. And you know, if you buy good stuff, it'll last forever. The inexpensive knife loses its edge after a while. You know, it does clean up. You know, if you do clean it, uh, and the stains will come off. The uh, grip is not as good as this. Just look at the size of it. You know, the back of your hand kind of falls off a little bit. So I think it just depends on your personal preference. If you like buying good gear that's going to last you a long, long time, well, then it's worth paying the $30 for this. If you don't really use the knife that much, well, $325, $329, or whatever this was, uh, that's probably the best choice for you. I'm curious as to what your experience with different types of bait knives is. Throw it down below in the comments. I, I really like this knife though. 